Time to meet the men from the ministry. We present Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler in The Men from the Ministry, a weekly tribute to the men of our government service. Men who would be fired with enthusiasm, except that whatever they do, they can't be fired. <laughs> as our story opens, we go as usual to the General Assistance Department, where we find our ministry men seriously concerned about a personal problem. It looks very droopy, one. I can't think what possessed you to buy it in that condition. Surely it wasn't the only cactus in the shop. It was the only one under two shillings. Two shillings? Was that all you found in the petty cash? Well, that plus four IOUs and a lapel button saying, make love, not war. <laughs> How does the cactus look to you now it's in place, one? Like a small green maggot with a nasty case of whooping cough. <laughs> You'd better get it some fertiliser, too. Good idea. I'll nip down to Horse Guards Parade. <laughs> Can I borrow your teaspoon? Uh, uh, no, no, certainly not. Part of the thing you say. No, no, I meant a little bottle of... Uh, yes, well, on second thoughts, don't bother. Shouldn't think it'll survive the day anyway. And it's time we thought about work. Work? But it's only Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I understand Sir Justin Burke is very impatient about this invention business. Invention? Oh, I remember. We had to nominate a British invention for the government to boast about. Yes, for National Science Week. But I thought we sent him suggestions a month ago. And he's rejected them all, too. Says we've been taken in by a lot of cranks. Cranks? Yes. What about that scientist with the marvellous new navigational aid? He's old from starvation and exposure, apparently. Got lost in the middle of Wimbledon Common. <laughs> well, there were other things. That car that needed no petrol. Had its back wheels higher than the front, so it ran downhill all the time. <laughs> Too dangerous. He is hard to please. What about that machine? The one that could replace coal? That worked. Well, it worked all right, but it needs too much coal to run it. <laughs> ah, here's Mildred with our elevenses. No, Mr Lamb, it's your quarter to twelvesies. You had your elevenses at half past ten. Have you heard of any new inventions lately, Mildred? New inventions? Yes. Uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, yeah. Earwigs. Earwigs? For people with bald ear holes. <laughs> oh, Mildred, please. I'm sorry, sir. I got that with a Christmas cracker. Oh, uh, someone's left a gherkin in our plant pot. <laughs> it's not a gherkin, Mildred. It's a rare floral display organised by Greenfinger's lamb here. Do what? It's a cactus, I bought. Only there wasn't much money, so it's not a very good one. Well, you're right there, Mr Lamb. It looks like an inch and a half of airy cabbage. <laughs> Any calls this morning, Mildred? Oh, yes, sir. Sir Joshua Burke's office ran. Sir Jason Burke, Mildred. Oh, I don't know. It was some Burke. <laughs> anyway, he's calling here this afternoon and he must have details of an invention. Two, we must think hard. Hmm? Uh, well, I mean, you must think hard. Unfortunately, I have to go out. You're going out, right? Yes, yes, I have to, I'm afraid. Yes, I've got to collect some important papers before I go to my club. Uh, important papers, I know what they are. The racing times and the sporting echo. Oh, well, I'm ready for a cup of soothing beefalax. Here you are, Mr Lamb, and it's a special treat. I've made it with milk today. Oh, but beefalax should be made with water. This is all sort of... Uh, well, I thought you'd been looking poorly lately. Weak, mud-coloured and hardly warm. Yeah, you've looked like that for days. <laughs> I meant the beefalax, Mildred, and why something special today? Do you want the afternoon off or something? Well, now you mention it, I have got a favour to ask. Tell me. It's me sister. She's got a problem with her chihuahua. She'll have to see her family doctor. A chihuahua, Mr Lamb, it's a little dog. Oh. You know, those tiny things with great big eyes. Oh, yes, I know, like barking mice. <laughs> yeah, well, me sister's up to do some shopping, and she doesn't like to leave him at home, and she can't take him round the shops, so she's asked me to keep him here for a bit. Is that wise, Mildred? You know Mr Lennox Brown doesn't like dogs. Well, yeah, but I thought we could lock him up in the map cupboard. It won't be for very long. Mm, I don't know. Mr Lennox Brown doesn't like being in the map cupboard. He says the dust starts his hay fever off. I mean, put the dog in the cupboard, not Mr LB. Ah, yes, that's a much better idea, Mildred. He'll be out of everyone's way. 
good. Well, I'll just fetch him in. You try that nice milky beef o lap. Oh, then. It looks awful. Yeah, ooh, it is awful. There we are. Come and see the nice office, then. Oh, Mr um, Lamb, aren't you enjoying that? Tastes like cold oxtail soup with added garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't drink another drop. Oh, Mr Lamb, don't pour it all on the cactus. You'll drown it, poor little thing. All right, you get rid of the rest of it. I can't bear the sight of it. Here's our little doggy. He'll drink it up. You could have the animal welfare people after you for that. Go on, Mr. Lamb. He's enjoying it. Aren't you, Punter? <laughs> Is he called Punter? Yeah. When they first had him, he was a bit of a pools expert. <laughs> Go on, Punter. Drink it up. That's it. And then you'll have a nice little snooze in the map cupboard. That drink's made me feel quite sick, Mildred. I'm going to take a breath of fresh air in the park. Righty ho, sir. Will you be here for a bit? Oh, yeah. Me boyfriend Bernard's coming to take me out for a late lunch at half past one. We're going to try that new fish restaurant on the corner. <laughs> Not a bad place, eh? What do you reckon, Mild? Oh, I think it's smashing, Bernard. Just like we was really on the ocean bed. What do you fancy on the menu? Uh, King Neptune's Delight. I wonder what that is. Oh, it's got to be a mermaid, ain't it? Oh, uh, I wonder where they get them. Oh, go on, you're having me on. <laughs> Look, it says underneath, King Neptune's Delight. Cod and chips. <laughs> Here, Mill. Hey, let's have this. What? Pacific ecstasy. That's cod and chips and peas. Oh, all right. I'm really hungry, I can tell you. It's been all go this morning. For a start, the office has been like a blooming dog's home. First Jane's Chihuahua, then your Alsatian. Yo, I'm sorry to lumber you with Lassie, love, only I've got to take her to obedience classes straight from work. And my boss hates big dogs. My boss doesn't like any dogs. Still, you have got that dirty great cupboard to lock him away in. It's lucky my sister collected her Chihuahua before you came. That huge Alsatian of yours would have swallowed him with one bite. Yeah, I'm very grateful, Mild. That's why I brought you that plant. Cactus, Bernard. They're called cactuses. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's funny, Mr Lamb bought a cactus this morning. Mm. Weedy little thing it was. Withered away by lunchtime. So I threw it out and put your big one in its place. He would not be surprised. Oh, I'd love to. A bit late, am I? Stayed at the club for a second brandy. Anything happening? I don't know, Mildred's still out. I only just got in myself. I was hoping to miss Sir Jason Burke, as we've no invention to offer him. Oh, dear me, I hoped that you'd sorted that out. No, I haven't done a thing about it. Not a thing. You are disgustingly cheerful this afternoon. Did you have an extra cup of your beef lax this morning, then? Funny you should mention that. Hmm? Mildred made my beef lax with milk today. It tasted so awful, it must have done me good. Oh, dear, it looks nasty enough made with water. With milk, it's really vile. Yeah. I'm afraid I threw most of it over that poor little cact... Good gracious one. What? My cactus, it's grown. It's enormous. Twenty times as big as it was this morning. By George, so it is. Yes. It must be the milk and beef lax. Oh, nonsense, too. It's just a coincidence. Well, I had some, and I feel twice the man I was this morning. Yes, well, I mean, it's one thing to feel better, and another thing to grow 20 times bigger. But I only had two sips. If I'd had more... Just a minute. The dog. What dog? That little dog Mildred brought in. Belongs to her sister. It drank the rest of the beef lax. Well, hold on. <laughs> Let's stop. Look, huh? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mildred had her sister's dog in here. Yes, very tiny little thing. It can stand on her hand. Yes, I know, yes. I've seen it before. Uh, we gave it the beef lax and put it in the map cupboard. And if the beef lax made the plant grow... You think? You think it made the dog grow, too? Yeah? You think it's a sort of elixir, eh? No, it's a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Look, uh, don't make me laugh, too. It may have speeded up the plant's growth, but a dog? Gosh, I mean, the idea's crazy. Well, he's in the map cupboard. We'll have a look, shall we? All right, well, here, I'll open the door. Now, you stand by to catch him as he runs up. Yes. These tiny dogs are very fast, you know. Yeah. Are you ready? Ready, man. Right. Here we go, then. Yes. Ah, oh, yes, I remember him. Squeaky little wretch. Yeah. In. Oh. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, dear. Shut the door, quick. Yeah. Hey, shut it. Oh, George, he's enormous. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see one, it works. This morning that dog was minute, now he's huge. Milk and Beefalax, it's the new miracle drug. Fantastic, a scientific breakthrough. And just at the time we most need it. How do you mean, man? Well, it's a new invention, isn't it? And it's all British, isn't it? Just what Sir Jason wants for us this afternoon. I could get a knighthood for this. Sir Richard Lamb. Oh, I can see it now on the tag of my raincoat. A knighthood? <laughs> now, listen to hmm? This is a joint effort. That drug was invented in my office, and I was the first to see its potential. Yes, but... So... We share the credit. Oh. Now, just remember that when we're talking to that ghastly Burt person. Good afternoon, Lennox Brown. Hey, oh, ah, Sir Jason. Ah, it's very nice to see you. Now then, Lennox Brown, have you or have you not found something we can promote for National Science Week? I have, Sir Jason. Ah, well, I hope it's more exciting than your last suggestion. A machine for smoothing the rough edges off cornflakes, as I remember. <laughs> And I still believe, Sir Jason, that that could have been a boon to wearers of national health teeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, my present offering is indeed far more important. Good. Then tell me about it. Well, I was given my elevenses this morning. Two. See, by me. Two. Yes? I, I'll deal with it. Oh, okay. I'll deal with it. Now. now, I have, after months of ceaseless research, Sir Jason, found a liquid which causes rapid growth in any organic substance. Uh -huh. Now, for instance, it may surprise you to know that this giant cactus, which now stands two feet high, was this morning, listen to this, this morning, a mere inch and a half. What? Well, that's astounding. Indeed, yes. And I have also conducted lengthy experiments on animals. Fed with this drug, they too shoot up to ten times their normal size. Good Lord, man. This is stupendous. Now, what's in the stuff? Ah, well, now, the basis of this wonder drug is a household beverage known as Beefalax. Yes, mixed, of course, with certain other... Complex fluids, too technical for me to explain. Yeah. <laughs> Beefolax, you say? Uh, may I add, this discovery has not come from the normal research teams under my authority. Oh, no. No, I have produced it myself after months of very, very hard work. You amaze me, Lennox Brown. Mm, me too. I must inform the Prime Minister at once. Well, please, tell him I'm not one of those who look for honours and rewards. However, uh, if he insists... Yes, Lennox Brown? I'm not one of those who rejects them either. No. <laughs> Nor me, I can tell you. I could get an earldom for this. You, Sir Jason? I is any of this stuff about lamb? A few drops left in my mug, I think. I yes, there you are. Thank you. The scientists like to analyse my discoveries at once. Did you say your discovery, Sir Jason? Where did you get this beefal axe? It's one and three a jar at any good ironmongers. <laughs> they call it the big square meal in the small round bottle. Mm. Well, I want you two to go at once to the beefal axe factory and buy up all stocks for the government. Can't let this fall into enemy hands. <laughs> at once, is that clear? Uh, yes, Sir Jason. I'll take these few drops to be analysed on my way to Downing Street. Yes. Good day. Uh, good day. The rotten swine. He's taking the credit for my discovery. Your discovery, but it's mine, mine, all mine. Oh, all right, well, calm down, Tim. We've, we've both been robbed. No point in banging your head on the typewriter. You stamped N-I-T on your forehead. <laughs> I'd like to stamp on his forehead one. He's a crooked, conniving, scheming, unscrupulous devil. And another thing, you two. Uh, but charming, you must admit. Oh, uh, yes, Sir Jason? About my discovery, I want absolute secrecy. Do you understand? Yes, Sir Jason. And also, of course, maximum publicity. See to it. Maximum publicity and total secrecy? I wonder how they'll manage that. They'll find a way. Very cunning, these government people. Mm. <laughs> This is John Curl introducing today's radio newsreel and first news of a British scientific breakthrough. The Prime Minister today revealed the existence of an amazing discovery. <laughs> For security reasons, he was unable to reveal what the discovery was or what it did. But he said it might well change the face of Britain or might not, as the case may be. <laughs> Reports are just coming in that the new discovery is based on the well-known British beverage Beefolax. It's said that a team of top ministry negotiators are on their way to talk to the manufacturers. Impressive factory, isn't it? Well, ring the bell, will you? Yeah, there's a rope dangling there, over there. Oh, yes, all right. Now, remember, too, we start the bidding low. <laughs> Unless the chap's heard radio news, really, he won't know how valuable his stuff is. So we can do him down. 
Well, don't put it like that, too. Oi, 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 what's all this, then? What's all this jingling, jangling, my dingling, dangler like that? What's your game, then? <laughs> we are from the Ministry, ah. you see, and uh, we wish to see uh, Mr Bertie Foote, owner of Beefalax Limited. Well, you've seen him. Hmm? I'm here. Y you're Mr Foote? <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not, I'm taking some terrible liberties with his wife. <laughs> well, come on, come in and close the gate. There's a shocking draught. Besides, the chickens will get out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. I see you have a hen house over there. That's not a hen house. That's our factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been a bit satirical, I uh, but it's... this huge concrete building. <laughs> Isn't that your factory? No, that's our landlords. Uh, they're very go ahead firmly, are they? Make Ganarden gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> we just rent the Saniques, you see, as you'll presently see if you'll be good enough to follow me and be so gracious. Uh, this'll be a pushover, too. We'll get his beef -a for peanuts. Peanuts? <laughs> we don't put no peanuts in the beef -a huh? Only the best goes in our little beaverage. That's why we keep chickens. Ah, you use a lot of nourishing eggs. Not at all. We use the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> we boil them down for the oil, you see, sir. Oh, dear. Yes, oh, I suddenly feel rather queer. <laughs> well, don't you worry about that, sir. We can't none of us help our nature, sir. <laughs> now, you just come in here with me, sir, and I'll give you a nice, refreshing drink of beef -a No, 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 thanks. I had some this morning. Here we are, sir. You come in here, sir. There you are. That's where we make the beef lax, sir. That's where we make it. That's our model factory, that is, sir. Model. That's because everything's a bit on the small side, you see, sir. <laughs> now, mind your head, sir. Oh, uh, pardon? Oh, it don't matter now, sir. Don't matter. <laughs> you better sit down on the bed, sir. Move the pig. That's it, sir. <laughs> uh, tell me, where, where is your staff, Mr. Foote? She's in the bathroom, stirring the vat. <laughs> Emily! Come in to meet the fancy gentleman from London. Emily's my wife, sir. She's a stirring in the beef. I've done 300 gallons, Bertie, and I need another beef cube. Not now. <laughs> Not now, you daft lummox. You say hello to the visitors. Oh, oh, pleased to meet you. Yes, right. Welcome to the home of beef or lax. How do you do, Mrs. <laughs> Built yeah. up beef or lax together, we have, sure, from very small beginnings. Very small beginnings, sir, yes, sir. When we started, Emily and me, we had to mix the stuff in an egg cup and stir it with a matchstick. <laughs> stir it with a matchstick? Yes, and look at us today, sir. We've got a vat and two ladles. <laughs> <laughs> if these chickens are bothering of you, sir, you'll kick them out of the way, a little varmint. Drat them! Drat them! Get out of there! Watch that one with the big coat, with your little yeah. varmint, dear. Yeah. Get them behind the yeah. wardrobe. Yes. Uh, I can't stand them, you know. Yes. 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 Mr. Uh, 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 may I just... Uh, yes, yeah. Sorry, sir, sorry. Well, no, no, it's just that I see, I'd like to tell you why we're here, ah, see, Mr. Foote. Yes, now, I am authorised by the government to make an offer for your factory and all existing stocks of beef -a you see. Crumbs! You hear that, Emily? The government want beef -a This is part of a, what do we say, a wider scheme for industry, you see. Now, we can offer a fair price. On oh, my word, yes, yes. I think, uh, I think I could go as far as, uh, a hundred. <laughs> Emily, do you hear what the pretty gentleman said? A hundred thousand pounds for our factory. <laughs> Blooming cheap. Yeah, no, <laughs> not, uh, not a hundred thousand, a uh, hundred pounds. Yes. Well, I tell you, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be very generous. Look, a hundred and five pounds and you can keep the ladles. Go oh, make me laugh or I'll have one of my nasty turns. He'll have one of his nasty turns? Yeah, and don't be flaming cheeky neither. My price for this old established firm, lock, stock and barrel, 500,000. I'm sorry, we didn't quite hear that. 600,000. <laughs> six, six, 600,000 pounds? Guineas. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. You'll have to do it, man. You know what Sir Jason said. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, yes, well, uh, very well, Mr. Fort. It's a deal. Oh, blimey, you're going to give us 600,000 guineas for Beefalax Limited? Yeah, that don't include Emily, does it? No, no, Mr. Foot. No. Of course not. No. That's a pity. <laughs> yeah, what's that you said? Technical talk, technical, you see, my dear. has nothing to do with you, like, say, don't Well, now, Mr. Foot, if you'll just sign this contract, it's all settled.
So we clinched it there and then Mildred. I can't see why the government want all this beef o lax. Well, you see, it's very, very hush-hush, Mildred, you see. I mean, as you heard on the news, we can't reveal any details yet. Suffice to say, we were asked to get it, you see, and we got it. Yes, and for only £600,000. <laughs> it's still a lot of money, isn't it? I mean, where's it all going to come from? Uh, in view of possible uh, military uses for this discovery, Mildred, Sir Jason is taking it from the Ministry of Defence. Oh, by the way, sir, the army kept ringing yesterday afternoon after you dashed out, asking if you got that new dye for soldiers' battle dresses. Isn't that typical? You think it's typical, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just when we're forging a scientific breakthrough, they bother us with trivia. New dye for battle dresses, isn't it? Good luck. What's wrong with their old stuff? Well, apparently, in some hot climates, it tends to irritate. A lot of soldiers have been getting sore patches on their tropical bases. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell them to sit tight for a bit. We're very busy on this Beefalax project. I wish I knew what's so special about Beefalax. Well, I'll give you a little clue, Mildred. Just take a look at my cactus there. Your cactus, Mr. Lyon? <laughs> yeah. Of course I haven't had time to tell you, have I? Your cactus all withered up, so I threw it away. That's a new one Bernard gave me. I put it there so we could all enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what? <laughs> it, it's... Not the same cactus, oh, Mildred. Mildred you, no, please don't oh, tell us. It, it, it can't be. Oh, be quiet. Too be quiet. Let, <laughs> don't boggle. Let, let, let's get this straight. Even if the beefalax didn't make the plant grow, it still worked on the dog. Didn't it? Hmm? Yes, it did. It did. It, it we did. saw it. Yes. Well, I, I hope you didn't mind about Jane's dog, Mr. Lennox Brown. I didn't think he'd be any trouble. I mean, such a tiny little chap. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, he was. He was, wasn't he? Yes, I mean, very tiny. Very tiny. I mean, tell me how tiny he was, Mildred. Oh, I could stand him on my hand. Stand him on your... Yes, you could. On your hand. Did you see? Of course you could. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, there you are, too. We can relax, oh. can't we? By God. Mildred, fetch us a cup of tea, would you? We nearly had rather a shock. Oh, what do you, sir? Oh, well, that was a nasty moment, wasn't it, too, eh? Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 I am. Um, sir, yeah. Bernard asked me to thank you for having his Alsatian here yesterday afternoon. Oh, oh no. no, no, I don't... Oh. Oh. Of all the hair-brained idiocy, of all the crass, incompetent, stupid, feckless... Dunderheaded, suggest. Dunderheaded, idiotic, blundering fools. Great new discovery, you said. Startling growth, you said. I've had that substance analyzed, and it has no properties whatsoever, apart from inducing nausea in white mice. It does the same for me, too, Sir Jason. Every newspaper's full of the Prime Minister's statement yesterday. The whole world's looking to us for a scientific breakthrough. And what have we got, eh? What have we got? I've got a few days' leave to come, Sir Jason. I thought... <laughs> You'll both need tomorrow for packing. Uh, packing, Sir Jason? You're both established staff, yeah. so you can't be sacked. No. But you can be transferred. Uh, uh, transferred, Sir Jason? Two very important vacancies have occurred in archives <gasps> on the island of Ballymucky, oh. off the northwest tip of Scotland. Vacancies, Sir Jason? The last two custodians found the isolation rather trying. Apparently thought there were seagulls and jumped off the cliff last week. <laughs> but you couldn't send us there. Wouldn't I? Two men who claimed they'd invented a miracle drug. Just wait till the Prime Minister hears the truth. Uh, just a little moment, Sir Jason. Mm. Didn't you tell him you'd invented it? Well, nothing's bad enough for charlatans like... What? Hmm? Uh, oh. <laughs> of course, anyone can... Make a mistake? Oh, they can, uh, they can, yeah. Doesn't do to judge too harshly. Uh, Quality of mercy. mercy. Not yes. uh, you mean mm. we won't have to go to Ballymucky? I might be able to prevent it. We've got to find the best solution for all of us. Work in harmony, eh, Sir Jason? Mm. Yes, all oh, quite right, yes. Now, here is what I suggest. And here is the news read by John Curl. It's just been announced that further tests on the new top-secret British wonder drug have proved it to be more shatteringly effective than was first thought. It now seems likely to be a serious threat to world peace. Accordingly, the government has decided to cease work on the project and destroy all records of its discovery. <laughs> the Prime Minister told a cheering House of Commons it will be as if this invention had never existed. <laughs> Thank you.
So Sir Jason's getting promoted, man. It seems incredible. Well, announcing we'd found this super drug and then saying we wouldn't use it has brought us tremendous prestige abroad, you know. Oh, oh our chapter of the United Nations has been fated by all the foreign delegates. Hmm. They've even clubbed together and bought him a Union Jack cushion for all night sittings. <laughs> I'm just glad the whole thing is over. There's a fleet of lorries drawn up outside, each with 50 drums of Betholax. Oh, I'd forgotten half a million gallons of Betholax. What mm. with Ministry of Defence money? And the Ministry of Defence have been on again about that dye for army uniforms. Yes, well, as we hadn't enough to cope with without... We... It... Wait a minute. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes, that's it. By Joe, you're right. Uh, what's it? Well, we relabel these Betholax drums and send them to the army. You mean they can use the beef lax to dye their uniforms? Well, why not? Look how it's almost stained Mr. Lamb's tie. <laughs> what a good idea, one. And if the soldiers get hungry, they can always boil up their jackets. Or even chew their trousers. <laughs> yes. Like you do, <laughs> Muddling through as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Gordon Clyde and guest star Clive Dunn as Bertie Foote. The show was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. <laughs>